Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to your weekend edition. Yes, so this is going to be a general energy reading for the weekend of Friday, August 30th through Sunday, September 1st. That's right, y'all. We are moving into September. Kids are going back to school. Uh, uh, you know, classes are back in session for the, the new semester for the college students. I mean, <sighs> summer is coming to an end, guys. Oh, wah, wah. But you know what? That's okay. We've got fall coming. We've got, you know, the holiday season, if that's your thing. We've got Halloween coming, you know. We've got New Year's. I mean, things are, you know, things are cool. Things are still good. <laughs> um, so keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid, okay? So just because this is dated for the weekend of August 30th to September 1st, it doesn't mean it has to absolutely resonate at that time. Also, keep in mind that this is not love, career, or sign specific. This is literally just what spirit wants to discuss with us today. Yes? Um, my allergies are still bothering me. <laughs> I did take some Claritin this morning, although I should have taken it last night, but it seems to be helping a little bit so far. So I'm going to do my best to keep the sniffles to a minimum, but you know, it is what it is. The struggle is real, y'all. Also, um, in terms of yesterday's reading, I apologize for the fuzziness um, from the microphone. I don't know when this is happening, um, and I don't watch the videos over before I post them because, you know, lately they've been like around 45 minutes long, so I'm not going to watch a bit of 45 minute video. Also, uh, before I post it, it's just going to take too long to get it up there. Also, there's nothing I can do about it once, you know, the, I, I've recorded it, you know, so it really wouldn't, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so it's, it's basically the nature of how I have my system set up because this, I, I use a wireless mic that goes into a USB port on my laptop that I'm recording with but the USB port is by the wall and I have my laptop positioned you know up on top of a speaker to give the right angle and sometimes the connection gets slightly disrupted depending on if I have to like move the computer and whatnot and it seems that's what happened yesterday so I have it stationary right now I'm not gonna try and move it at least I'm gonna be very careful about it um, but I apologize Sorry about it, guys. Anyway, let's get into today's energies. We've got a pre-shuffle here. And these energies are really good. Okay, we have the sun with the three of wands and the, um, the wheel of fortune. Overall energy, we have the eight of cups here, which did come out two days ago, yesterday. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, with the ten of swords. Okay, so... This is, these are good energies, all right? These are definitely good energies. Um, someone is definitely walking away from something, planning potentially on leaving something behind. I am getting an energy of planning. That's what I heard, especially with this Three of Wands energy. It looks like this person is looking off into the distance. Now, this is the Emperor, actually. If you see here, this is the Emperor, the figure that we would see on the Emperor card. But um, in this deck, at least. But it looks like this person is looking off into the distance into a field of pure potential. Basically, that's what I'm seeing with this. Um, and, and also, I'm getting that planning because with the sun here, there is a bit of confinement, all right? It could be that the sun has is setting on a cycle, on a situation, which would make sense because you do have this Ten of Swords here, okay? Um, or it could be the sun is rising on a new day after a cycle has completed either way there's a little bit of confinement because you can see this young the, the the young child and the horse are behind walls that are guarded interesting though there are guards on top of this wall but these guards are facing the young child and the horse so it looks like the individuals on this card the child and the horse are on the outside looking in. Which would make sense because then on the other side here, um, they are in a field of sunflowers. 
Okay, so there's a barrier, there's a blockage here. But in all honesty, I, I feel like it's for your own good. And that's kind of what this says in the book, what the book says about this side of the card. Sometimes these blockages or these barriers or whatnot serve a higher purpose, serve your higher purpose here. Um, for some of you, I'm actually getting, an, uh, 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 I'm channeling in that the reason why you may be facing some sort of blockage or something is because it's not quite the right thing for you to be associated with here. With the Wheel of Fortune, I do see, especially with this figure being the Magician, from the Magician card here, in this deck, that they, they like to use a lot of the same individuals in throughout the cards, which I think is really cool, but this is the Magician here, manifesting exactly what is in a right alignment with who he is at that moment in time. So uh, what I'm figuring, or what I'm feeling here, there is manifestation happening, okay, in divine timing, of course, also represents here, but it's also manifesting, which is just take it, I would say take it at face value, all right, don't read into it too much, I guess, don't allow, I'm not going to say, sort of circumstance and say see see I told you so or something like that it really it's it's the block whatever whatever might be uh whatever blockage you might be facing whatever barrier you might be facing whatever wall you might be standing in front of it's it's for a greater purpose okay it could be being held by the universe right now because really like close out some cycle from the past that has come to an end. Either way though, rest assured, I mean, you are on your path, three of wands. The sun is here. The sun is the most optimistic card, okay, in the deck. And the Wheel of Fortune here is saying, in terms of this circumstance, that everything is actually turning in your favor right now. Manifestations are coming through serve your purpose, to serve the purpose, to serve your higher good, okay? Now, we do have a new moon tonight. There, the new moon is in Virgo. Whoa! And the Seven of Swords just wanted to pop out. And it's interesting because... Um, Instagram live reading yesterday at the beach. It's still up as of right now. Um, it's quarter to nine in the morning Eastern time as I'm recording this. Um, and the video on on Instagram is going to be there. Live reading is going to be there until about 3 p.m. Eastern time today, uh, the 30th of August. Um, and one of the first things I channeled, because I was doing, I decided to do a little on this new moon in Virgo. And one of the first things that I channeled was needing to stay focused on reciprocity. Stay focused on the relationships and the circumstances that are reciprocal. All right. Um, and then Alex Miles, someone that many, many of us follow, um, posted information about the new moon and one of the first things on there was reciprocal reciprocity focus on being focused on reciprocity i'll probably re repost that later on today but then look here the seven of swords came out just as i was starting to talk about um this new moon in virgo and it seems that there could be a circumstance in which someone is trying to get away with something so maybe if you are facing some sort of blockage with the sun it's a blessing in disguise because um maybe that could be a not to well first of all maybe it's not a reciprocal situation that you were maybe trying to get yourself into um what you may have thought was rep was was manifesting in a certain specific way may not necessarily be that ultimate manifestation because something isn't quite complete isn't something isn't quite right someone isn't being quite as honest as they should be whatnot whatever keep an eye out for relationships that try or relationships or circumstances that are slighting you okay 
that are not being honest with you, that are not being truthful. Individuals that are just trying to get away with something or just trying to get something over on you. All right? That is not a reciprocal relationship, said Spirit. Maintain your focus on reciprocity right now. All right? What is balanced between the give and take? What circumstances in your life are balanced between give and take? And if you're asking yourself that question and you're looking and not really finding much, then maybe you should take some time to yourself. Maybe go into a little bit of a hermit mode to figure out how to adjust that. Because that would need to be, for it to really be fully adjusted in the external, it needs to be adjusted internally first. Yes? All right, kids. So your weekend edition here. Let me give this one reset shuffle. All right. Ooh, getting a download there. Ringing in my left ear. We have six. Interesting. Okay. Um, some you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. I got a reading from um, Emily of Indigo Moons. Um, I, I, I just like because I wanted a, just an update on what Spirit had for me in terms of the Twin Flame journey. I hadn't had one in a long time, and one of the things that she said to me was while I was channeling, make, one of the messages was, "I'm connecting to Star Family. That I'm connecting to." Um, you know, the individuals that I resonate with and, the, and the, the, you know, my star family, the star kids, whatnot, whatever, star seeds, whatever, you get it. Um, and so in order to do that, while I was doing my, while I do my morning meditations and like my stretches and, and yoga and whatnot, I take a moment to consciously connect to star family. And yesterday, it ha what happened was like, I actually got, I, I saw myself connecting um, to like a starport, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, and, and as I was connecting to it, I heard um, you are now secure in sector three, <laughs> which I thought was so cool, you know? Hold on guys, oh, all right, Archangel Michael. Um, but I heard you're now connected to, to sector three, which was so awesome. And then three was such a strong number in that reading yesterday, but also, so okay, so whatever. But so, so now that we are, we're in this energy of reciprocity being such a focal point, right? For this new moon in Virgo, I had, I was getting an, a ringing in my left ear. And when I tuned into it, I heard we have switched. We have, we have retuned. We have switched to sector six. Six being a number of balance, harmony, and reciprocity. The six of pentacles is the card of reciprocity. Okay. That is so cool. All right, so I have a feeling that this is what the message is going to be about today. I know I'm doing another shuffle, but it's okay. Um, ooh, Seven of Wands just wanted to pop out. That is uh, boundaries, blockages, boundaries. Burdens, I heard. Boundaries, though. Boundaries are needed here. Maintain your boundaries. Sector six is secure. All right, cool. Let's do this, guys. So this is actually, I think this is going to be a new moon in Virgo reading. All right, let's do this. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of August, Friday, August 30th through Sunday, September 1st. And also please bring forward the best messages for us to know of at this moment in time for our new moon in Virgo. Thank you so much, Spirit. You know what? We're going to give this six shuffles. So bear with me, guys. <laughs> six shuffles for Sector 6 for... Balance of reciprocity, balance and reciprocity for harmony for our new moon in Virgo. My eyes are closed here. Three. Best messages, please, Spirit, for the collective. 
for our weekend edition, Friday, August 31st. No, sorry, August 30th through Sunday, September 1st. Four. New moon in Virgo. This is five. And one last shuffle here. This is six. All right, guys. New moon and Virgo energies are strong is what I'm hearing. All right, let's get into this. Eyes are closed, so let's see, just, let's just see what pops out. New moon and Virgo, please, spirit. Best messages, please. Tuned into sector six here. For our weekend edition, Friday, August 30th through Sunday, September 1st. And there we have it. Okay. All right, we have the Page of Wands here. Page of Wands did come out, was it yesterday? Ah, with the moon. All right, y'all. Yo, we are tuned in. And I just saw 555 on the counter. Well, 1555, but hey. Sector 6, secure here, y'all. All right, so in this side of the moon here, uh, we do have the individual in this deck that is the high priestess she's bare all right she's naked she is in the water she and and naked naked in um uh in spiritual truth symbolizes honesty purity you know showing up as you are being who you are yes and this is the figure of the high priestess here okay so also we see because if you look at this side here on the moon, if this, if we're looking at this side, this is the, the, the traditional side, yes? You have these two pillars here. These two pillars are kind of very similar to that of the tower. When you look at it from this side, you see that these pillars are yet, yes, they are hollow, just like the tower card, okay? So uh, the message here, especially with the high priestess being here, um, especially also uh, as overall energy with this Knight of Wands. I'm sorry, not the Knight of Wands, the Page of Wands. I, did I say the Knight the first time? This is the Page of Wands. Um, and with this Phoenix Rising energy, yes, there is a brand new you that's kind of coming into play here. I feel like the High Priestess is asking you to look at yourself, look at what you've learned, okay, throughout all of this ascension and whatnot that we've all been going through and see who you are in comparison to this all right this the high priestess is the woman in this moon card she's making an offering it's like you've gotten past the trials and the tribulation yes and now it's like you're really ready yeah you're really ready to set yourself free here we have the Five of Cups, we have the Eight of Pentacles, and we have the Eight of Swords. But in the Eight of Swords, this side of the Eight of Swords, you see how loosely she is bound. This individual can get out at any time. It is now time to start working, all right? To leave, start leaving the, the past behind, start leaving the regret, the shame, the remorse, whatnot, whatever behind, and really start doing your work, okay? Nine of Swords is in reverse with the Four of Swords, actually. Um, I didn't know this Four of Swords was, was here. And as I went to pick up this Nine of Swords, the Four of Swords was trying to turn right side up. So we're going to do that because I feel like what's coming through here with this is an energy of, um, ooh, the Five of Swords goes with it too. We have the Five of Swords here also. I'm going to talk about this in a second. But I feel like, Yeah, the Five of Swords does go with this because there's anxiety here that's being released, okay? And there's contemplation. I feel there's contemplation, all right? Um, there is an energy of looking back at backstabbing, at sabotage, at comp extreme competition, okay? Um, and some, for some of you, and it's funny because I've been in this energy too, some of you are in a process of letting go of some things that no longer resonate with you, whether those are relationships, uh, career um, trajectories, um, hobbies, things that you were passionate about in the past. Some of these are really super competitive. Or some of you may have been sabotaging yourself by feeling like you had to stay associated with these people, these places, these circumstances, these jobs, these hobbies, whatever. And it's 
causing you grief and anxiety because it was no longer resonating with you and yet you were still staying there. But the situation was not reciprocal for you. It was not, and, and that would just mean it was not giving you back what you were putting in. It wasn't reciprocal. Okay, you have the King of Wands, the Ace of Wands, the Magician in Reverse, and, not the Magician in Reverse, I'm sorry, the Hanged Man in Reverse, and the Queen of Wands. Well, shit, y'all. That's really freaking awesome. This is the balance. This is the balance of masculine and feminine energy. This is the harmony. Okay? This is, a har this is harmonizing between your masculine and feminine energy. Both of their backs are to us. Now, it's funny because yesterday I was starting the reading for the collective and a personal message came out and it consisted of the King of Wands with his back turned and the, the, the Hanged Man in reverse. Now, on this King of Wands, you see this giant anaconda and this giant anaconda or this giant snake is the salamander, which is on the front here, okay? At night, this salamander, um, salamander transforms into this massive snake. Now, the snake is not a bad thing. The snake is actually this man's compa companion. The snake represents wisdom, and it represents cho choosing knowledge and wisdom over, we'll say, dogma or uh, conformity okay it's it's very much representative of what the snake in the story of Adam and Eve represents now people make the snake out to be an evil character why because he coerces Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge which then gets them thrown out of Eden but is ignorance really blissful there's so much more to existence, to our lives, to ourselves that can be explored. Knowledge is power, right? I mean, take that as it resonates for you. Now, you have the Queen of Wands here with the Sphinx in front of, with a Sphinx in front of her. I don't quite know what that means though. I wanna look into the book for that for a second. Hold on a second, let me see here. I never actually started, I read the major arcana, you know, for this deck. I never actually got into reading the minor arcana. But, let's see here. The Queen of Wands, Inner Self. The back of the throne emphasizes its organic quality. It was not built, it grew. Looking outward with the queen, we see that while the forest is at her back, the vista before her is open. A, magne a magnificent sphinx dominates the scene. The throne seems to have been placed to overlook this statue. This queen is pulled towards the unknown and perhaps unknowable. Her outer life casts, an energetic sh the out casts out energetic strands that connect her to many people and things. But at her core, she needs silence. Her inner life is as twining and complex as the vines of her throne and she requires deepening time yeah, deepening time to think it all through. Absolutely. So both of these individuals are quite contemplative. The masculine is, in the King of Wands, is contemplating social norms to an extent, is contemplating basically what is right or wrong for him, or for him, right, for the individual. The Queen of Wands is contemplating her inner reality, basically. Okay, is contemplating what, how she extends herself to the world, how she's intertwined with the world. Then there is a sense of enlightenment here with the hanged man in reverse. Why? Because we have, in fact, come out of a strong period of enlightening, enlightenment, a strong period of seeing things from a different perspective. You are at this point able to see something from a different point of view, from a different perspective. Why? Because you have awakened or you have reached a new sense of awakening, a new level of awakening, a deeper sense of awakening. You are more woke. I can't stand that phrase, but you are more woke at a deeper level of yourself. 
And thus you can contemplate these things and gain some sort of new perspective or, and, or some new inspiration to move in a direction that is way more in alignment with you. Ace of Wands, Page of Wands. Beautiful guys. So just like I was picking up on yesterday for that Instagram live reading, this new moon in Virgo is very contemplative and it's very much a very uh, 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 strong, um, where a phrase, how, am I, how do I wanna say this? You have a strong energetic uh, field to plan with. There's definitely an energy of, of being able to plan your next move, your, yeah, your next move, um, where you want to go moving forward, what you want to manifest. And even part of what I was saying in that reading yesterday was some of you need to just be careful not to be too hard on yourselves, be careful not to be too perfectionistic, especially in this Virgo energy, because some of you may start to realize that some of the manifestations that you have in your life don't really no longer resonate with you. And that could, I don't know, that could lead to some sort of doubt, fear, self-deprecation, whatnot, whatever. Like feelings of like, how could I manifest this? How could I have wanted this at one point in your life? Don't do that. Don't waste your energy on that. Focus more on the fact that you have now come to a point where you can't, you have, you have woken up, okay, to the fact that so something no longer resonates with you. So now it's time to create something new. Now it's time to create, go in a new direction. For some of you, you really have felt like you have been bound here. Like you had no other option but to pursue certain things. And that was a self-sabotaging situation. But now you have the ability to see further, to see deeper, to see past the illusion of the Maya to a certain extent, to now create something that is much more in alignment with you with your soul, your soul path, your soul mission, whatnot, whatever. That's really great, you guys. <laughs> it's really, really great. Okay. Alrighty, cool. So let's, let's get into a little bit of clarification here. I want to use the Golden Universal Turo for this. We're just going to get some deeper clarity, some deeper understanding. And I want to talk about what the King and Queen of Wands represents here. Now, with this King and Queen of Wands energy, what I'm getting is this is your internal balance, okay? Your internal balance of masculine and feminine energy. It could represent... It could represent a counterpart in the external, but spirit is saying, no, nah, focus on that. We want you to focus on your internal balance of masculine and feminine right now. So I guess the reason why I was saying that is because some of you may have been asking, does this involve a counterpart? Yes, of course. Sure, it does. Especially if you are. Sorry, guys, let's let this go by. Especially if you are in an energetic space of manifesting a counterpart in the external, then yes, of course, it, it can include a counterpart because you could say that um, the two of you are resonating or mirroring each other in this sense, even if you haven't met this person yet. But Spirit is saying, we want you to maintain your focus on your internal reality because that manifestation in the external is not going to come forward until you have reached that balance sufficiently in the in the internal now what does that mean well sufficiently means what is right for the connection you are bound to make you don't have to have 100 percent. it doesn't have to be 100 percent perfect on in the internal for you to, for it to manifest you just have to reach a sufficient amount of balance for yourself and for your individual connection what is that in, 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 exactly i don't know Go in, do some meditation, speak with your guide, speak with your higher self, see if you can figure that out. But it's really not necessary to figure out. 
All that's really necessary is for you to just continue man continue working on that internal balance. And you do, for the most part, you guys, you do have it. Okay? I don't want you to think that what Spirit is saying or what I'm saying is meaning that you don't have this balance. You do. You have this king and queen here. They are balanced. In, I mean, they're facing this. They're both looking off into the distance. They're both contemplating. And you can say that they're working together, hand in hand, to create this new direction for yourself, okay? Emperor. The emperor is at the bottom of the deck. Ooh, I like that, y'all. All right. So let's get... I'm going to shuffle this two more times, and then we're going to get some clarity on what this represents here. King and Queen of Wands with the Ace of Wands and the Hanged Man in reverse. Enlightenment has been achieved. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be another round of enlightenment coming, coming down the pipeline in your journey. Don't get me wrong here, but for right now, this cycle of enlightenment has been successful. And it's like you're graduating. It really is like you're graduating, and now you are in the process of working deeper reaching deeper levels of yourself and your, I heard autonomy. Okay, so let's see here. What do we have for this spirit? So clarity here, the two of wands. I told you, now you are at the place where you can make a choice as to which direction you would like to go in. And good Lord, I think we have the 10 of cups. We do have death. I told you, transformation, two of wands, choosing a next direction at a crossroads here. Let's see, what else do we have? What else do we have? What else do we have? We do have 10, but let's see what 10 it actually is. Where are you? We have the Nine of Cups. Ah, it's the Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so we have the Nine of Cups, which is great, and we have the Ten of Pentacles. Overall energy, we have the Seven of Pentacles. Checkpoint. I mean, between the Two of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles, this absolutely is a checkpoint. Okay? Absolutely is a checkpoint. Seven of Pentacles is saying that you have come to the point now where you have, you have learned enough to say, okay, what do I have in front of me? Is this the manifestation that I want? Is this the, are these the fruits of my, are these fruits of my labor, the fruits that I really wanted to manifest? Or do I need to go in a different direction? Do I need to try a different fertilizer? Do I need to try a different watering method? Do I need to f try different seeds altogether? Please be careful, guys, because this is a good place to be. I do feel some of you feel slightly anxious about this. It's like, oh no, what if I got it wrong? What, uh, or you may be seeing some things in your reality that you really don't want or you really don't like and you're feeling like you've gotten it wrong. You haven't gotten it wrong. Why? Because the other part of this card here, the Seven of Pentacles, is about learning through contrast. Okay? That's how, that is how we learn. I saw a meme yesterday that said no relationship is a waste of time because even if you came out of it saying, I did not want that, now you know what you want. You have a better idea of what you do want versus what you don't want. So, of course, it wasn't a waste of time. You haven't done anything wrong. You haven't gotten anything wrong. All you have done is learned. And that's exactly what we're here for. Okay? The Seven of Pentacles is also a Virgo energy. All right? There is one card here hidden. Ah, look at that. Good old Five of Cups. Now, the Five of Cups here is cautionary. It's cautionary. Guys, all is not lost. This is a very, very important message. Somebody really needs to hear this. All is not lost. You have not gotten it wrong. Okay, so there are some things in your life that aren't quite in alignment with you that need to be discarded. Those three, that three of cups right there. Okay, that's fine. All is not lost. You still have these two cups here. And these two cups, the two cups that are representative here on this five of cups right here are absolutely talking about the balance of masculine and feminine here. Absolutely. All is not lost because you still have this deeper sense of balance and understanding and reciprocity. The spirit kept saying reciprocity. 9-11. It is 9-11 right now. This is a call to action. Lightworkers. Hello. But spirit is saying you also have that reciprocity in, in that relationship between the masculine and feminine within. Okay. 
completion, Ten of Pentacles, lessons learned, understandings garnered, granted, okay? Time to move on to a new cycle. Death, satisfaction is guaranteed. Nine of Cups. And this is, for some of you, this is, some, this is a bit of, um, um, what is the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, instant gratification in the sense that you are able, <laughs> some of you are actually happy about the fact that you are leaving some elements in your, to your past behind, some things that were just draining you, that were toxic, that were not reciprocal. You're happy about the fact that you've come to an energetic space where you've realized, you, come, you truly understand that whatever it is you're leaving behind you is no longer resonating with you. And this is absolutely a sigh of relief for some of you. For others of you, this is, this is a little more down the line when you actually are able to let this go. When you actually are able to let it go. You'll feel that satisfaction. You, you, like I'm, I'm literally feeling like you guys can breathe again. Just like a, oh, relief. Yes? Now, the other thing I want to point out is on this moon card, it looks, it, this, I, I guess officially this would be the moon is eclipsed. But I'm seeing it as a new moon. Because the moon, the new moon is completely dark, right? I'm definitely seeing that as a new moon. This is so cool. This is definitely a new moon reading. Um, Spirit wants me to do more, more clarification with the Lenormand deck. Okay. Reciprocity. Okay, so Lenormand deck is going to tell us, give us some insight as to what we can look for as we're, as we're doing this analysis here with the Seven of Pentacles energy, yes? What are some red flags or high signs that we can look for in terms of achieving the balance of reciprocity in your lives? Okay, one more shuffle. And then the dragons. <gasps> oh, and then we're going to get Oracle guidance from the dragons today. Oh, man, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Okay, here we go. So reciprocity, please, spirit. Red flags, high signs. In terms of reciprocity, I knew it. The fucking whip came out. It's so crazy because I, I immediately, as I started shuffling and I was talking about it, I was seeing the whip in my head. I should have just said something. Oh my God. I just got an email about a sale at Old Navy. Hey. <laughs> okay. I, I do have to start. I have to start thinking about my winter wardrobe, you guys. This is crazy. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start here. I am going to pull more, but let's talk about this. Let's talk about this whip. I wanna, and what I'm being guided to do is just read this to you guys. This intro, this, uh, this, what this has to say in the book about this card. Birch broom. I see this as the whip, but okay, whatever. Be warned of high temper. I bring conflict and strife. Hold on, before I go any further, what I'm getting is this is, this is that perfectionist tendencies, perfectionistic tendencies that, um, is indicative of Virgo energy. Being way too hard on yourselves. Be careful of this. I mean, this is, this is, I actually, oh, I do need, I do need to read the entry. Okay, that's fine, I will do that. But this is literally what I was talking about. The very first thing that came out in the new moon in Virgo reading that I did on Instagram Live yesterday. If you guys get a chance to, please check it out before 3 p.m. Eastern time today. All right, if you can, if not, don't worry about it. We've got this going on right here, so it's all good. But be careful of that. So be, 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 be gentle with yourself, but also look for places in which you are being pushed too hard. 
You are being worked too hard. You are striving too hard and you're not getting back in return what you have been putting into the situation, okay? Be warned of high temper. I bring conflict and strife. You will find me in competitions because I work with repetition. Arguments and quarrels are my patent, but I am not always a villain. I can be found in the gym or in a lusty bed on a whim. The birch or broom is one of the troublesome cards in the Lenormand deck. Like in Tarot, oh, I'm sorry, unlike in Tarot, there are definitely favorable and unfavorable cards in this system. When the birch comes, frenzy will be whipped up, creating discord, and a person will be quick to anger. The card is trouble, strife, disharmony, conflict, argument, and all things stressful, particularly when seen in the birds, with the birds, but we don't have that yet. A crack of the whip will be exerted either by you or against you. The reverie depicts the curling whip and the birch, a bundle of branches slightly bound, which was used to reprimand and castigate, or cast, yeah, castigate, castigate. Birching was used in France during the French Revolution and during the time of Mille. Oh, oh, of Lenormand herself, himself, herself, sorry, I don't know. Uh, okay, moving on. <laughs> it is, in its most positive sense, we have here a card calling us to bring our forces and attention together, to get focused, and to get all our, quote, ducks in a row. All right, we're going to do one more pull from the Lenormand deck in terms of reciprocity here. Red flags, high signs, how can we achieve reciprocity in our lives right now? balance in between give and take. I'm really, it's interesting that the six of pentacles didn't come out, but it's okay because we're talking about it anyway. The seven of pentacles, they just said the seven of pentacles. Came out. That's the more important one. All right, cool. Oh, card number 29, the woman, feminine energy, being receptive, receiving. This is also, these, both of these are cards uh, both of these numbers are cards boil down to 11. Look at that. This is Virgo, all right? This is the feminine, the virgin even, but this is fe the fe uh, feminine energy being receptive. What are you receiving, guys? What are you receiving? Last poll. Are you receiving anything? If not, do you really need to stay there? I don't think so. Reciprocity, y'all. That's enough? Yeah, that's enough. Oh, at the bottom of the deck, though, is the sun. Beautiful. Illumination. I love that. I love that. All right, kids. Let's close out this reading here with our dragon oracle. It's interesting because I bought this deck for the masculine, to work with the masculine energies for our divine union readings, which are coming back starting in September. Um... But the masculine, I guess the masculine is, is wanting to come through here to guide us, to aid us, um, especially since, you know, Virgo is, is very much a feminine energy, okay? So we have the feminine in Virgo, right? That's asking us to learn how we can be more receptive. The, the masculine is coming forward here now to guide us. How? To guide us how, spirit? To guide us in terms of what moves we can make in the direction that we wish to go in. In honoring reciprocity is what they just said. Okay. Last shuffle here. And I love that. I love that. Especially since we got the masculine and feminine in the king and queen of wands. And it's so perfect that it came out as wands because wands is spirit. Wands is your spiritual nature, your passion, your desire, what you're passionate about, your creativity, what you want to do, what you want to create, how you want to extend yourself in this world. Beautiful. All right. Guidance, please. Oracle guidance, please. Spirit from the dragons, from the masculine here. That's enough. Okay, overall, you have royal blue and gold dragon. Strengthens you to stand in your power with wisdom. Awaken to your own majesty. Wear your cloak of power with pride. This is absolutely your individual power. Absolutely. Oh my God, this is such a fantastic reading. I'm going to put this 
here so you can see it. Yes. And then finally, you have Lilac Fire Dragon. Transmute through the power, uh, transmutes through the power of divine love. Open up to transcendent love and enlightenment. Purity of heart brings peace, hope, and joy. And that's really what we're moving into. That is the energy that we're moving into here. We're moving into what brings us peace, hope, and joy. And in order to have that, you have to have purity of heart. You have to clear your heart of the burdens, of the drama, of the struggles. It's not about hustling, hustling, hustling. It's about aligning, you guys. I want to read from the book here. I've never actually read the book. I want to read what it has to say for this lilac fire dragon. And I don't even know how this book works. There it is. Fifth dimensional dragons. This is a fifth dimensional dragon. Excellent. What is the overall energy? Royal blue and gold. This is so cool. Hold on, bear with me guys. Royal, the Royal, oh, these are both fifth dimensional dragons. Both the Royal Blue and Gold Dragon as our overall energy and the Lilac Fire Dragon. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Fifth dimension. <laughs> oh my God, this is awesome, you guys. All right, I'm gonna read the Lilac Fire Dragon and then, we're gonna, and then that'll be it for today. Uh, page 44. And I'm going to read Uh, I want to read all of this. I'm just going to go ahead and read all of this, guys. Bear with me. This is so cool. Okay. About. These dragons are fifth dimensional. However, they can reach up to the ninth direct dimension to access the awesome lilac fire source, which is a new energy recently graced to Earth. This carries transcendent love as well as enlightenment. When these dragons pour their lilac fire over and through us, we are bathed in divine feminine light, which has the power to dissolve all lower energies in pure love and brings us peace, hope, and joy. It also bathes us in the higher divine feminine qualities of wisdom, agape, and oneness. Having this, ener having this energy in our aura may even allow us to experience bliss and ecstasy. Guidance. When you choose this card, a lilac fire dragon will touch you with incredible ninth dimensional light. So call it in and ask it to touch you. As it approaches you, breathe in divine love and sense the lilac fire enveloping you. This will enable you to let go of the old, easily calm, I'm, I'm sorry, hold on. Oh, this will enable you to let go of the old, easily, calmly, and graciously. Notice particularly how you feel when this dragon touches you and sense the purity of the love that it radiates. Ask this dragon to remain with you to anchor the glorious light of the lilac fire and take you into a new and illuminated way of being. When you do this, the love radiating from your heart will become purer and more beautiful. People will sense this and respond with trust, respect, and gratitude. Consciously work with this beautiful dragon and notice the difference it makes to your life and the quality of love around you. Beautiful. So beautiful. Okay, I'm going to stop there and leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.